Welcome back, this is Yama Jack, and today we got Gunslinger Suicidal KF Rig. What the heck? I just feel like my uh, sensitivity was way off there, dude. I don't know what the heck happened. Something, something weird, though. Something weird, though. I've been watching uh, Il Mango. He's uh, part of the SciCraft server, which is the most ambitious Minecraft server, like, ever. Um, they look at it from a very scientific perspective, and they, they end up doing a lot of game-breaking stuff, and, and, uh, creating a lot of what, uh, what you see in other people's videos as well. If you watch Mumbo, if you watch Etho, if you watch, uh, well, not so much Etho. Um, Etho kinda makes his own stuff, for the most part, and, and, uh, I respect him for that. Um... But a lot of what you see in people's videos is uh, is is originally made on uh, on the SciCraft server or or by their members anyway, um, and a lot of it is made by a couple of other technical servers out there as well. But uh, SciCraft is definitely probably the the biggest major server currently around. Anyway, there was the like Zip Crowd a while back that was also pretty prevalent, but I think they're mostly gone now. Anyway, the uh, the SciCraft server is. Uh, where El Mango is, they do a lot of scientific stuff, and it is a highly ambitious server with like insanely big farms and really, really cool stuff going on on it. Um, but he made a he made a statement a while back, which is, I mean, in my opinion, true. Um, where he said that, uh, you know, I'm gonna paraphrase here, but uh, after after a certain point of uh, of time, you know, as an experienced Minecraft player, peaceful mode is the hardest difficulty in Minecraft. Um, because at a certain point, as a uh, as a Minecraft player, you're not really worried about dying so much to uh, to zombies and skeletons and creepers. You know how to to handle them. You know how to build where they don't spawn. You know how to light things up properly, and and they they end up leaving you alone for the most part. You end up utilizing them more than anything else for for tools and for um, XP for items and all kinds of, uh, of good stuff right like you don't really need to um, you don't really need to worry about uh, the mobs so peaceful isn't really making it easier because the mobs are already not a difficulty they're just a a part of the game, you know what I mean? As, as a as a person who's good at it. now, if you're bad at Minecraft, obviously the mobs are going to be more challenging. You're going to have you're not going to know how to handle like cave spiders when you find them in a, in a mine shaft. You're not going to know how to handle creepers when they drop on you from a ceiling. You're not going to know how to deal with like a huge horde of skeletons and and, um, and the lightning charged creeper is going to mess your day up when you get to the end portal, which you're not going to do anyway in peaceful, really. Um, the silverfish are probably going to spook you a bit, and, um, you got, like, all of these mobs and stuff, and, and when you're not experienced, obviously, they're a lot harder to handle, but when you are experienced, you know how to pretty much just avoid them in the first place, you don't really have to, to see them, um, at all, um, really, until you want to, um, so it's, it's kind of like, um, Man, my voice is going. Um, not sure why I've barely been talking this week, especially today. Um, so when, when you're experienced at Minecraft, you uh, peaceful mode is harder than hard mode because peaceful mode removes the mobs which you were using to make your game and your life easier, right? So when when you when when you think of uh, of Minecraft as a as a as a like experienced skilled player. You know, and I'm I'm talking like people who are probably in like the top ten to even one percent of of uh, of Minecraft players out there. Maybe probably probably top one percent really with with how popular Minecraft is. Maybe even like top point one percent with how popular Minecraft is. You know, like it's it's a pretty small subset given the the size of Minecraft for sure. Um, but once you're there, you know Minecraft. Having an elytra and 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 like rockets to, to fly around everywhere, that's like you know you you pass the early game. You know what I mean? Like that's 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 mid game now. 
you're in, you're into you're into the mid game, right? Um, and for a lot of people, that's end game. That's like I beat the game, I got my my powerful stuff. Like, what do I even do from here? But but for for those of us who understand the mechanics of the games and stuff, like that's that's barely the start, you know. Um, and uh, you you think about this, right? In hard mode, you can go farm up some Endermen. Get your Ender Eyes. Find your way into the strongholds. Kill the dragon. Go farm some, some Shulkers for Shulker boxes. And you can get um, your Elytras. Make a Creeper farm. Get some gunpowder to make all of your... Um, to make all of your... Uh, no, it's, it's over here, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know where it is. I know where it is. I know where we're going. Do, do, do. Um, you make your creeper farm to get all of your gunpowder and stuff, right? In peaceful mode, you can't kill the Enderman to get to the end um, stronghold and then fill in the, the eyes. So getting to the end is only possible to begin with on like a couple of seeds at most in, in, in like at all where uh, where the, the end portal spawns with all of the, the ender eyes in it. So like just getting to the end is is like unbelievably rare. You don't have ender eyes to find your way there, so it's like a major pain to even get there in the first place. Um, and then you kill the ender dragon, which does exist on peaceful. You go, you find an end stronghold. There's no shulkers there, so you don't get your your shulker boxes. Um, you, you have to get like one or like one shulker box or maybe two shulker boxes per elytra that you get I think I think there's maybe a shulker box or something like that in uh, in the end fortresses that spawns naturally with uh, with some loot in it or something like that where you find the elytra I can't remember um, but uh, you know you, you might be able to get a couple of shulker boxes that way um, you get your elytra. You're not going to have gunpowder because it only comes from creepers and like dungeon chests. So you're not going to have rockets to fly around. Um, so the end, like exploring the end is just so much harder because you can't fly. Uh, to, to go get more shulker boxes and, and more loot and stuff. Um, you don't have a, like a bone farm, so getting bone meal... For like farming trees or wheat, carrots and stuff like that is is so much harder. Um, you can't get a beacon because it requires wither skeletons and subsequently a wither. So you can never have like a, a beacon at all. You can never have haste two. So mining is harder because you can never instant mine stone without uh, being on at least normal. Um, slime farms are almost impossible to make. Like a, a decent amount of slime balls per hour in uh, in hard mode is like you know you're, you're getting up into the five six digits kind of area you know like 10 20 30 thousand you know hundred thousand kind of thing if you're making like a really high-end thing um, you know that's definitely pretty good farm there a good slime farm in like peaceful mode you have to use uh, the sneezing pandas you end up with uh, like I want to say maybe a few hundred slime balls like an hour at most it's 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 worse by a factor of like a hundred <laughs> you know like um, so so making flying machines and stuff is, is a lot harder you can get honey, but honey isn't necessarily a straight replacement for slime because it functions a little bit differently in that it holds entities and is a little bit differently sized, and redstone doesn't get uh, conducted through it, whereas it does for slime, so it's, it's a different block, but still has the sticky stuff. It's not a straight replacement for it. Um, some things can't be done with honey. Some things require slime. Um, well, don't necessarily require it, but uh, definitely want it. So you'd, you'd be using some, you'd have a slime farm as well um, to get it, and then mostly honey, but that means redesigning a whole bunch of stuff. Um, enderpearls, you're never going to get an enderpearl, or you might be able to get a couple of enderpearls, I guess, from the end strongholds and stuff, but uh, 
Like you're not you're not really gonna have an end Enderman farm to just go get like all of the Ender pearls you want. So moon maneuvering around like redstone contraptions and stuff is so much harder. Um, oh, yeah. you can never get blaze rods, so potion brewing is like really tough. <laughs> Getting brewing stands in the first place is kind of annoying. And then uh, brewing potions, some of them you just can't brew because they require um, mob drops that you can't get. Um, let's see, what else do you what else do you kind of got going on here? Uh, piglins you can get in peaceful to do some piglin trading, uh, but you have to find like a structure where they spawn in, um, and then there'll be like a couple of them that. Are generated with the uh, with the world. Um, yeah, like in in general, um, peaceful mode is is harder than than hard mode. Uh, in fact, the the order of difficulties once once you're good at the game, and again we're talking like a pretty small subset of the players, um, where where it's actually like this order for for a lot of the players, like I'd say maybe like ten percent normal is probably the easiest and hard is probably the second easiest um, it's probably a pretty small subset where hard is actually the easiest difficulty but once once you're at that point hard does become the easiest difficulty because um, even even compared to normal mode uh, hard gives you like bigger slimes so you get more slime balls per hour in your farms um, it gives you like I think bigger pack spawns or something like that there are a couple of mechanics where in hard um, oh yeah like villager like stuff kind of changes in hard and like there, there are a couple of changes in hard that are designed to make it harder but which also pay out with more loots right um so yeah the game gets harder so to speak but once you pass the point where that's actually a challenge all you're getting is more loots you know what i mean um so for for an experienced player the the difficulty goes hard normal peaceful with peaceful being the hardest and hard being the easiest um, anyway, so, uh, Il Mango made, uh, made a statement like that. He, he, he claimed that a while back. And I agree with it, which is why I went on a rant about it as well. But he made a, he made a statement about that a while back, uh, where he said that Peaceful is the hardest difficulty to play. Um, and I agree, and I went on a rant about it. Um, anyway, so he's got a Peaceful Challenge series that he's running right now, and it's really, really cool to see how he tackles some of these problems, actually. Um... Because the new updates give you actually like some ways around a lot of the non-renewable like peaceful uh, mob drops kind of thing that you would normally not be able to get at all. Um, like with pandas, you're able to get slime balls now. You're able to; those are renewable and peaceful even. Uh, with pandas, so you can get a okay an okay amount of uh, of slime balls from a uh, a panda farm. Um. We're gonna bunk ya. I didn't bunk him. I didn't bunk him. So you get an okay amount of slime balls from it now. You can get uh, bone meal from like composting stuff. You can get uh, no way to get gunpowder. Uh, piglins spawn, which give you access to a bunch of stuff. Villagers have tra have changed a lot as well, so you get a whole bunch of cool stuff uh, from them. Um, yeah, just in general, there's there's a lot of, uh, oh yeah, string. You get string from, uh, at least early game, you get string from killing cats, which you can farm in, like, witch huts and with villagers and stuff. So there's, like, a whole bunch of cool ways uh, to get the mob drops in Peaceful, and it's been really, really interesting watching it and seeing how he, uh, how they, rather, because there's the three of them on the server, how they tackle these problems and, uh, and kind of work them out and get them functional and uh, build up this world. It's been really, really fun to watch. It's been uh, ever since I decided to start m making a Minecraft series. I've been watching like a lot more Minecraft videos myself, and it's it's been good fun because uh, I love I love watching Minecraft videos. Honestly, that's why I want to make them because I love watching them and I love making videos that I love watching. Right? Anyway, enough of the Minecraft. Hopefully, you guys like Minecraft too, so you get. To enjoy these kinds of videos but 
We don't have to talk about Minecraft all day. We don't have to talk about Minecraft all day. I was talking to a, uh, a friend the other day about poutine. And uh, they thought that poutine was uh, maple syrup and fries. Which apparently is also pretty good. And I'm like, sounds weird, but I guess I can kind of see how it, how it would work. But uh, if y'all don't know, just to make sure you put it out there. Poutine is gravy, fries, and cheese curds. It's a delicious concoction of uh, delightfulness. I love poutine. Poutine is like... I mean, it's like the typical Canadian food, right? Um, like when you when you think of Canadian food, you think poutine, right? We got some other Canadian food, like we got Nanaimo bars, which were made in guess where Nanaimo. Um, yeah, uh, we got uh, what other kind of Canadian foods are there? What foods originate in Canada? Dude, I can't remember honestly. Yeah, we got poutine. We got uh, oh, Hawaiian pizza is apparently Canadian. That's neat. Split pea soup is Canadian. Yeah, it's born in Quebec, I guess. Butter tarts, butter tarts, right? Yeah, no, that's another one for sure. Uh, butter tarts are definitely a uh, a popular Canadian um, pastry sweet thing. I love butter tarts personally. Uh, people put raisins in them. Mm, not super into it, but uh, without the raisins, mm, they're delightful. Nanaimo bars. Um, and then, of course, we have maple syrup, but that's not really so much a Canada thing. We do make almost all of the maple syrup uh, in the world, um, but we're not the only place where you make maple syrup. So It's not really a, a Canada food. It's more of a Canada product, but then it's also kind of a food. I like maple syrup. A lot of people, you know, when you talk about maple syrup, um, a lot of people will be like, oh yeah, I have maple syrup all the time. The thing is, is you're not like, a, a lot of people will say that they have maple syrup and then uh, it's kind of like, you know, maple syrup at home or uh, mom, can we get some maple syrup at home? And mom's like, we have maple syrup. And then the maple syrup at home is just your aunt Jemima. It's not, it's not maple syrup. It's like, it's, it's, not, it's not even like a, an elitist thing to say that it's not maple syrup because it's like actually, literally, legally distinct from maple syrup. It's it's actually, genuinely a different thing. Um, but people call it maple syrup anyway, but it's like actually not maple syrup. Maple syrup is, is a completely different thing. The only thing they have in common is that they're both syrups, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, I always find it kind of funny when people are, uh, are talking about how they, uh, they love maple syrup on their pancakes and stuff, and then they, they end up just having, like, a bottle of pancake syrup or whatever. Like, it's, that's just corn syrup, which you're allowed to like. We have it here in Canada, too. It's just, it's literally not maple syrup. Um, so a lot of people who say they like maple syrup have, have just actually never tried maple syrup and have no idea what it tastes like. Uh, if you haven't had maple syrup, like real maple syrup, there's actually a few different like kinds of maple syrup. You have like uh, amber, dark, light, you know, all these different types of of maple syrup with different flavor profiles um, and different like sweetnesses and stuff. But generally speaking, maple syrup isn't actually all that sweet. Um, it's mapley. It's 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 maple syrup, right? Like, if you ever had, like, a, a maple donut or something like that, that's more similar to maple syrup than your, your regular old pancake syrup, honestly. Um, minus minus the sweetness, even. <laughs> like, um, yeah, if you've, if you've never had maple syrup, it's, it's I really like it. It is kind of expensive, um, even here in Canada. Like, I pay 10 bucks a bottle, and it'll, it'll last me... Uh, if I had it for as a condiment for like all of my meals, which I don't. Um, but if I did, it would probably last me like three weeks for a bottle of maple syrup, if I had it for everything I ate. Um, maybe, maybe two weeks, honestly. But I don't have it for everything I eat. I have it for maybe breakfast, 
here and there, maybe a lunch here and there. Glaze some salmon every now and then, you know. Um, it's not it's not that expensive to use. You do you don't use too much of it, but um, definitely uh, definitely is pricey. And again, it's largely a Canadian product. So as a Canadian, I'm probably getting a bit of a discount over uh, shipping costs. Um, but I am also on an island. We don't really produce it on the island. Um, so. Yeah, I, uh. Don't know. Maybe, maybe where you guys are, you know, wherever you are. UK, America, Asia, whatever, dude. Maybe over there it's a little bit more expensive, you know? But, uh. Over here, it is at the at the borderline of being affordable, um, so I typically buy it and I keep it around. I don't have a favorite uh, like kind of, of maple syrup, like a favorite. Uh, I don't know what they're called. Um, like, is it a, is it a purity? Is it you know? What? Let's check that out too. Maple syrup, amber versus dark. It's like the Maple Facts and Fiction. <laughs> so it is, uh, it's the grade of, uh, of syrup. Um, so you got grade A medium amber. See, so can I just show you this? Yeah. We're going to just go off the rails with this episode. So you got your grade A medium amber, which is a shade darker than fancy, which is uh, this Vermont fancy, which is like this uh, very clear light syrup. Um, yeah. I got the grade A medium. You got the grade A dark. I got some, some dark around right now. This is a... Uh, very mapley um syrup like quite mapley and then grade b is kind of like the last bit that kind of comes out of the uh tree which is uh more for like cooking generally speaking um you wouldn't generally want to use it for uh like a table syrup kind of thing, but I mean, if you want to go for it. Um, yeah, so anyway, those are the three different types of, uh, of maple syrup grades that you have. I uh, I kind of go between both of these typically. I don't really go for grade B so much, but, um, and I never had Vermont Fancy. That's the wrong one. I never had Vermont Fancy. Maybe I'd like to try it one day. I mean, I would like to try it one day. I can tell you that for absolute certainty. Um, but I guess they're called grades, and it's uh, it's based on the uh, of the time of year that uh, the syrup was harvested, which is kind of cool, I guess. Learn something new every day. Um, yeah. So I guess that's your uh, your your maple syrup education. I learned some stuff too. I've never had the Vermont Fancy. Again, never tried it. I don't really see it at the stores. Um, so I don't really get to go with that. Um, but I would like to try it out one day. It sounds fun. I mean, I want to try everything, right? Um, grade B stuff is... Yeah, not, not so great. I like Dark Amber. I like Medium Amber. Those are both pretty good. I got Dark Amber stuff uh, in backup right now with some Medium Amber stuff sitting in my fridge waiting to uh, be used up kind of alternate. They're both good. They're both very, very good, in my opinion. They're different, um, but both both very good. Uh, the medium amber is, um, I mean, as the thing said, kind of uh, lighter, almost like sweeter kind of thing. Um, the dark amber is a little bit more maple-y, a little bit less sweet, but uh, ultimately they're, they're, they're pretty similar. Um, interchangeable, I would say, for, for um, like breakfast dishes and stuff. They are definitely different. Um, I just think that they're both good in the in, in similar ways. So I think they're interchangeable. Definitely different. 
You should definitely try them both if you get the opportunity. I mean, try them all if you get the opportunity. Um, but, uh, yeah, a lot of people who say that they like maple syrup, that, uh, say that they're fans of maple syrup or whatever, have never actually had, never actually tried real, genuine maple syrup. Which is, uh, funny to me, because, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not like I'm laughing at them, you know? But, it's, uh, just kind of, it's just kind of a funny thing that happens, you know? Because it's pretty frequent. That, that will talk, that I'll talk to somebody and they'll be like, oh yeah, I have maple syrup all the time. And I'm like, oh really? Oh, if you're a real maple syrup fan, what kind of maple syrup uh, was used in um, Revenge of the Flies, Episode 3, Part 1? Huh? Um, but I'll be like, oh, really? Like, what's your favorite kind of maple syrup? You know, like, not, not as a... You know, trying to verify that they actually have a, a, a fondness for maple syrup, but as a just conversation thing, you know, like, what kind of maple syrup do you like? And then they typically say Aunt, Aunt Jemima, and I'm like, right, so, maple syrup 101, that's actually not maple syrup. <laughs> um, but people don't know it, right? Because everybody, it's, it's kind of like the Kleenex problem, right? Like, I, I go grab a Kleenex, doesn't have to be Kleenex the product, you know? It doesn't have to be Kleenex the, uh, the product, you'll know that I'm grabbing a tissue paper, but uh, Kleenex is used so much as um, as just a generic sort of tissue paper thing that uh, it's kind of lost its its trademark, so to speak. You know what I mean? Um, so it's kind of a similar thing, right? Like people call it maple syrup, even though that's not what it is. And so it just kind of becomes sort of colloquially, anyway, kind of what it is. You know, people just call it maple syrup, even though that's not what it is. But but people will call it maple syrup anyway, just because that's what people call it. Um, so it's, it's just kind of funny to me. Um, and I think that most, not, I, don't, I won't say most people, I'll definitely not say most people, but I think that a, a lot of people, I don't think it's like a... 90 10 split, you know 90% of the population doesn't know what maple syrup is and 10% does um, I think it's pretty close to a 50 50 maybe even um, I don't know somewhere around there anyway, but uh, Definitely a lot of people um, Don't know what maple syrup is they, they've never tried it But the last court when they go to a restaurant, but even though they've never ever had actual maple syrup which uh, to me is just it's it's uh, I mean it's kind of like a topic that I come back to all the time with with just like living in different environments and having different experiences and and then something that's that's so unbelievably common for me is is something that's very uncommon to somebody else or even just never happens you know like how often are you woken up by uh, owls hooting at your window probably not very often but it happens to me fairly frequently. How often are you guys woken up by um, deer scratching at the at the wall right next to your head? Probably not that often, but a very common problem for me. Um, yeah, I mean it's just it's just you live in different areas and you you raised with different experiences and you have different things going on and um, kind of uh, it's kind of interesting it's kind of a similar thing right like if you live in an area where you call Aunt Jemima maple syrup then that's what maple syrup is to you right if you live in an area where uh, there are no deer then you're not gonna have deer waking you up in the morning right like I've never been woken up by like a uh, bear at my tent that's never happened to me right but to other people, it's probably something that had actually happened to them like a number of times. And I, I just think that's kind of cool. Um, but it's, it's the same thing with uh, with maple syrup, right? Like some people just 
don't live in an area where you get you get really maple syrup stuff, right? Like Aunt Jemima is what you get. And Aunt Jemima is like a, a racist icon, I believe. <laughs> Which is... I don't know, funny in a kind of bad way, I guess. Um, there's, there's a whole lot of like Auntie Aunt Jemima stuff. Because like a black woman who's cooking you food or something like that. Um, people don't like it. But, uh... You know, people want to, um, have their, their, you like what you like, is, is really what it boils down to, and it's okay. But, uh, I, I do genuinely find it just so fascinating, so amusing, that there are people who have never had maple syrup, but will still adamantly say that they like maple syrup, and that they have it all the time, even though they've never had it. Just, just because the meaning of the words, like, change, and, and depending on where you live. They, they, I guess the meaning of the word doesn't really change depending on where you live, but it also kind of does. You know, like in your area, locally, you know, your dialect, that's maple syrup. Globally, you know, in English, as 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 the world speaks it, it's not maple syrup. And that, that discrepancy oftentimes can bother some people. Can get in the way of some people being able to, to be accurate or, or, or whatever. And it happens with other things too, but maple syrup is the one that I experience the most. Um, because, I don't know, I'm a Canadian that likes maple syrup. <laughs> but, anyway, if you guys had maple syrup, if you had real maple syrup, like actual maple syrup, not pancake syrup or corn syrup or, or artificial maple syrup or whatever, but like actual, genuine, like pure maple syrup. Not necessarily right out the tree, but, uh, you know, like real maple syrup, genuine, good old fashioned, like uh, medium or dark amber maple syrup. You guys ever had that? I have it all the time. I love it, dude. I love that mapley taste. I'm the kind of person like uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, do you guys get maple donuts <laughs> at your uh, place? Like, like as a, as a Canadian, I'm sure it's probably more frequent that. Uh, We'll have like maple flavored stuff at uh, at restaurants. It's not even like an event. Like you just go to a restaurant. There's 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 likely to be some kind of like maple glaze on something, um, or like a maple donut or something like that. Like that's that's a pretty common thing. Is that common in other parts of the world? Because maple syrup wouldn't be as maple isn't isn't as big of a as a, as prominent a thing in other parts of the world as it is in in Canada, right? So would you even get it? It's kind of like the poutine thing, right? Like I go to a restaurant, I can order poutine at it. Any restaurant. You name a restaurant, I can go there and I can order poutine. All of them carry poutine. And I will eat poutine at any of them. <laughs> um, same kind of thing with, with maple. I can go to almost any restaurant. And there will definitely be some kind of maple thing. Maple glazed salmon filet, or something. Oftentimes, maple desserts goes really well, really well with desserts. Um, like a maple glaze and maple frosting or something. Um, really, really good with desserts. But anyway, you guys ever had maple? Do you guys get maple stuff in your in your towns when you go to a restaurant or a fast food place? I don't know, dude. That's good to do for today, though. Thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like, and subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.